Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Jessica Basie, and I'm going to talk to you about magical mangroves and living shorelines. A little bit about me. Full disclosure, I am not a scientist. I'm just a high school teacher who was inspired by my own high school teacher, like many of you, Mr. Bill Haynes. Mr. Bill Haynes had such a passion and a love for mangroves and our local marine environments, and he instilled that passion and love in all of his students. And so I really have made it sort of, I don't know, maybe not my life's work, but I've made it a priority to protect and preserve what we have left of our mangrove canopies here in South Florida. Now, my son and I started an environmental organization. We started paddle boarding around the canals in the Middle River where we live and started collecting trash. Uh, and we also started to notice these red mangrove propagules floating around in the water. Now, because there are so many seawalls, which I'll talk about in just a few moments, they don't have anywhere to take root, right? So we gathered them up and we thought, Maybe we should plant them. So we reached out to our community for um, some uh, donations of tanks, and we, we got more tanks than we actually needed because of like-minded people who understand the importance and significance of these red mangrove propagules to our local environment. So we filled up these tanks with substrate, which is just a fancy word for sediment and rocks. We took our garden hose and filled the tanks halfway up, and we've stuck these in, and just like magic, a few days later, they sprouted. Uh, to date, we have removed uh, over 4,000 pounds of mostly plastic, ocean-bound trash from our waterways, and we've planted nearly 200 mangroves um, in public and private land in the, in the surrounding uh, cities. So what are mangroves exactly? There are about 80 different species of mangroves and they grow worldwide. They basically straddle the equator in tropical and subtropical um, climates. The only two continents where mangroves do not grow are Antarctica and um, Europe. So mangroves start to grow and what is so special about them essentially is their specialized root systems. Their root systems are truly magical and I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment. Now, mangrove deforestation happens all over the world. In fact, we've lost about half of uh, the world's mangrove forests. In the state of Florida, mangroves are actually protected by law, but because of population growth, we have seen the loss of certain, uh, in certain areas where population growth has really exploded, uh, of mangrove canopies. South Florida, uh, according to many scientists, has lost almost 90% of its coral reefs. 90%. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's uncomfortably close to 100%. Try to imagine for a moment a South Florida with no coral reefs. Now, why is this happening? Well, global warming, rising ocean temperatures, something called stony coral disease. Now, scientists are still trying to figure out the origin of stony coral disease, but what they do know is that bacteria and poor water quality are playing a significant role in the spreading of this disease. In 2022 and in 2021, we saw an exponential increase in manatee deaths. Um, almost 2,000 manatees died, which is higher than the combined number between 2016 and 2020. Now, of course, boat strikes and natural causes would um, contribute to this, but what we're seeing in the past few years is that manatees are dying of starvation. And why are they starving? Well, Fertilizer runoff that contains nitrogen and phosphorus is killing off um, their, their mainstay, seabeds, basically, sea grasses that they eat. So you can see the manatee um, on the right, uh, its rib cage is showing. The manatee on the left is a picture that I took down in the Keys a few years back, and that's a healthy manatee. Now, manatees are robust, round, robust, and, and rotund animals, and their, their bones should never, ever be visible. So. What makes mangroves so magical? So many things. They improve water quality, okay? So they reuse the fertilizers that people 
essentially spray on their lawns, their St. Augustine grass to keep it nice and green. Um, that, that fer those fertilizers run off into our waterways, essentially, and they cause these algal blooms, and these algal blooms um, create fish kills, and again, they, they kill off seagrass beds. Now, so the, the mangroves will use this fertilizer to grow. So um, it's essentially cleaning out, you know, the, the waterways of, of, these, uh, of this nitrogen and this phosphorus. Now, also what they can do is one study in East Africa that was um, funded by the European Union is showing that mangroves can actually remove human wastewater that is spilling in our canals. And we've seen here in South Florida recently um, this happening right here because of construction and development and, and poor uh, infrastructure. We've seen exploding sewage, you know, sewage lines into our waterways. So mangroves can naturally clean out poop and pee from the water. Now, I've, that's not magical. I don't know what is. Mangroves provide essential food and habitat for so many species of animals. Manatees and some species of sea turtles will eat the leaves of um, mangroves. Nesting seabirds like ospreys and egrets and herons and spoonbills and so many birds rely on these trees for um, habitat and of course nesting, uh, nesting grounds. Mangrove roots provide shelter for juvenile fish, and they also provide spawning grounds for mature fish. Lobsters, crabs, shrimp, so many things. Now, if you have lived in South Florida for the past 10 years, then you are well aware of the frequency and force, the increasing frequency of force of hurricanes. Hurricanes are just a part of our lives, and we can expect them to hit the state of Florida pretty much every year. Um, what can mangroves do? They can reduce wind energy and they can reduce wave height. What they also do is their roots stabilize sediment, soil, and sand, and they prevent erosion from happening. And if they do that, then it prevents flooding. And we've also seen quite a bit of flooding recently here in South Florida. Economic benefits. Now, um, the commercial and recreation um, Fishing industries rely on mangroves. I've talked to many local fishing guides and all of them understand the importance and significance that mangroves play in keeping our fisheries healthy and thriving. Many species of fish just would not be able to survive without these mangroves. Uh, we have, a, a, as you all know, we have a boating industry and a tourism and a fishing industry that generates literally billions of dollars every year and provides Broward residents thousands and thousands of jobs. So I might be going out on a limb here, but I dare say that if we don't start looking at sustainable development and, and, and putting back the mangroves that we have lost, it could really lead to some really poor um, economic um, future. <clears throat> The Venice of America, I'm sure some of you know, if you're uh, you know, a, a native like me, that the city of Fort Lauderdale is called the Venice of America, and why is this? Well, we have about 300 miles of navigable canals here in the city of Fort Lauderdale. Now, in the 1920s, developers began dredging out canals and creating waterfront lots where there was a, an actual you know, population boom back then. And they started building seawalls, and of course those seawalls seemed like a really good idea at the time because they were creating a barrier between the water and the properties. The problem with seawalls is that first, they start to degrade as soon as they're built. And what's probably the worst thing about seawalls is that they prevent these propagules from taking root, right? So they cost tens of thousands of dollars to, to be replaced, and eventually they're all going to need to be replaced. What we need are living shorelines. And what are living shorelines? Living shorelines either occur naturally on the banks of rivers and canals, or developers or whomever will place um, rocks and boulders instead of a seawall so that these red mangrove propagules and other mangrove species and other plants can take root and then grow and, of course, you know, particularly with mangroves, they can start to work their magic in our waterways. They provide, of course, as, as I've already told you, you know, that essential habitat for so many tens and tens of thousands, I dare say, of uh, aquatic species. 
Here's a picture that I took. You can see that there is a living shoreline on the right, which abuts right up against um, a man-made seawall. So you can see here that the red mangrove propagules just floated there. They, they root in there, and they start to take root and grow, and they will eventually work their magic. Here's a great example of a responsible developer who did not put up a seawall, but rather they put those boulders, as you can see, and eventually, probably by next year, when I go back to this particular um, spot, which is not that far from my house, we will see plant life there. So um, as you can see, I think that living shorelines are a much better alternative to seawalls for many reasons. So magical mangroves are truly ecosystems of hope. They sequester and store four times the amount of carbon per 100 acres than rainforests. Human beings need mangroves. Manatees need mangroves. Our coral reefs need mangroves. So we all need to make sure that we protect and preserve what we have left for many generations of human beings, of animals, and plants to come. Because, friends, there is no planet B. Thank you for listening. <laughs>